Hello again, YouTubers. Welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm your host, the Board Game Captain, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be doing a classic game review on the game Nine Men's Morris. Now, Nine Men's Morris is a game that's at minimum 3,400 years old. So when I say classic, I'm not talking about 20 or 30 years here. This is at least a 3,400-year-old game. The reason we know that is because the oldest board ever discovered by archaeologists was a board that was carved into a stone in ancient Egypt, and that was carved 3,400 years ago. So that's the, the minimum possible age for this game. Nobody knows who actually invented it. And as you can expect for a game that old, these game, this game has evolved over time and there's a lot of variants and variant rules and option rules you can use, which is really cool. And I'm gonna go over some of those and tell you what my favorite is when I show you how this game works. Now, this version of the game that I have uh, is branded into a leather a uh, piece of leather that can cinch up as a pouch with all the pieces in it so it becomes an easy to carry pouch. Let me show you that. I'll put the pieces inside. This copy was produced by Eastwind Games who is a company that shows up to the Renaissance Fair that is in Wisconsin every year and uh, they sell a lot of games produced by other companies but they also produce some of their own like this where they brand them into leather classic style games and um, sell them with some pieces that you can use to play. So let me show you the components now of Nine Men's Morris. So now here's the board. The board is a set of three squares inside one another and you play and move on the points where all of the lines intersect. The other pieces are stones, which in this case are glass beads, but uh, I'm sure in, in old times they would have used actual stones. And I actually have played Nine Men's Moors with stones uh, with other people when we didn't have a board on us. Now these are some clear glass beads, which act as the pieces for one player. And these are some black glass beads, which act as the pieces for the other player. Now, not, again, Nine Men's Morse is a very old game and it reached its height of popularity in ancient Rome. Now, you gotta remember back to ancient Rome when it came to two-player abstract strategy games, chess hadn't been introduced to Europe yet. So, this was a very popular game at the time. Now, its, it's popularity did wane once chess got introduced to Europe, but it came back again, actually, in the 1800s in the United States, when it used to be a convenient extra game to print on the back of checker and chess boards uh, and was marketed as cowboy checkers. Now, let's have a look. I'm going to take you over to the table and we're going to see how this game is played. Uh, then we're going to come back. I'm going to give you my opinion on it. I'm going to review it and we'll get a second opinion from Lynn. All right, so here is the board for a game of Nine Men's Morris. Now, you don't actually do much of a setup except put the board out because the setup is actually part of the play. So as you can see here again, there are three squares within one another. And in addition to the squares, you have lines that come straight out from the center square and intersect through all of the side squares. You additionally, on this board, have some dotted lines that go out diagonally from the center square. Now, uh, that's for one of the variations of the rules, which I'm going to explain momentarily, and that is my personal favorite variation of the rules. So let me show you how the game works. So, uh, in this case, uh, white always goes first, so, in this case it's clear is, is white, so you start by placing stones on the intersections. So white might place on an intersection there. Now the object of the game is to attempt to capture pieces by making mills. Now a mill is three connected stones in a row, but diagonal connections do not count. They have to be in a straight vertical or horizontal connection. Uh, so for instance, this would be a mill. This would be a mill. And so would this. Now if you do this, if you make a mill, three in a row, you're able to capture one of your opponent's pieces. Though, 
if your opponent has pieces in a mill, as well as pieces that are not in a mill themselves, you must capture the pieces that are not in a mill before capturing pieces that are in a mill. Pieces that are in a mill are semi-protected in that manner. However, if all your opponent has left is three pieces and they are in a mill, then you are allowed to capture a piece from that mill. Now, so, white goes first and they play a piece here. Then black goes and they decide to play a piece here, and I'm going to run you through how this kind of works. So then white goes again and they play a piece there, black plays there, white plays there, black plays there, white plays there, black plays there. White plays there, black plays there, white would play there, black plays there, white plays there, black will play there. So now each player has taken a turn until they've, they've put all nine of their pieces out on the board. Now in this case, no one was able to make a mill during the setup. If they had, they would have immediately captured a piece, but both players spotted, because both players are me, spotted all of the traps they were trying to lay for each other. So once you have played your pieces on the board, you then have to move your pieces. They move along the lines, once one intersection, and you must move a piece. Again, if you're able to form mills, then you will be able to capture one of your opponent's pieces. So, uh, also, if you are not able to make a move, if at some point you literally cannot move one of your pieces, you will automatically lose. You win if you capture enough pieces that your opponent cannot make a move any, uh, excuse me, you capture enough pieces that your opponent cannot make a mill on their own anymore, or you can also win if your opponent surrenders, which is quite often the way this goes, because when it becomes obvious that you have won, usually your opponent will, will say, I give, let's play again. And this is the kind of game that plays in about five or ten minutes, goes really, really quickly. So white has to move first, and white is already seeing that there might be a problem over here with a possible mill that black could make. So white's going to move a piece there. So that kind of messes with black's plans a little bit. So black decides to move a piece here. So let's see. So white is going to have a look and try to figure out what they can do. So white is sees, oops, black made a mistake and white's going to capitalize. White just made a mill. So now white gets to capture one of the, the black's pieces. So in this case, black could make a mill on next turn, so white is going to stop that, and it's going to capture this piece and take it off the board. So now it's black's move, and black is in a bit of trouble because white already has a mill. However, black does have each piece in the mill covered by a piece one space away, so they're not in that much trouble yet. They still have the ability to stop white from, from just opening that mill and reclosing it again and capturing pieces. But they're going to move this piece here. So now white will try to figure out what they're going to do. They're going to move this piece there. Now black's in trouble. So black is going to move this piece here to stop that from becoming a mill. And then white is going to move this piece out and black cannot block them from remaking a mill there, so they're in a lot of trouble at the moment. They're going to move a piece over here, and white is going to make a mill again, and making the mill again allows them, again, to capture another piece. Now, this goes back and forth until someone says, obviously, 
you have one. Now in this case, it's probably only another move or two before black concedes, because as you can see, black can't stop white from making a mill here again, this mill here. So watch, black looks at that, says, okay, well, let me, let me hurry, let me see what I can do. I'm gonna move this piece here. White says, nope, mill. They take this, and now white can point out that they are able to hammer their opponent on every turn. Hammering is when you literally every move can capture a piece. So if you look here, white has a mill here, and white has two pieces here with an open spot here that they can every turn now move there, mill, move there, mill, and every turn capture a piece. So they point this out to their opponent, at which point black says, you got me, good game, they shake hands, and they play again. And that's all there is to it, to playing a game of nine men's mortis. Now, I want to point out a couple of uh, optional rules. Like I said, the dotted lines on the diagonals on this board allows for diagonal movement, but not diagonal milling. There are some boards that come with solid lines on the diagonal that actually allow you to mill diagonally. Now, I have a, a general feeling that these boards allow for milling far too easily and, and take some of the strategy out of the game. Also, the regular board, which doesn't allow any diagonal moving, while it's still good, I also find that that version of the game is a little restrictive and far too easy to uh, lock a person into to having uh, to a stalemate where both them and their opponent can't make a mill. It's a little harder to do that, to lock your opponent into a stalemate in this version of the game where you can move diagonally but not mill diagonally. So that's how you play a game of nine men's Morris. So let's head back, I'll review it, I'm gonna tell you what I think of it, and we'll get a second opinion from Len. Okay, welcome back. So that's how you play a game of nine men's Morris. Now, nine men's Morris is a classic abstract strategy game. This particular copy I did buy at uh, Renaissance Fair, by the way, which I had mentioned earlier that Eastwind Games shows up to Renaissance Fair every year. Uh, Nine Men's Morris, at this point in time, is one of those games that you often uh, will see in those compilation uh, classic board game sets. Uh, it, it does show up sometimes on its own like this. There are some companies out there that will make their own uh, copies of Nine Men's Morris. But it's a game that the board is so simple that you can scratch it into the dirt and play with rocks. I personally once played a handful of games with another Nine Men's Morris enthusiast at a dinner party with a board written out on a white tablecloth with some white and black stones taking it out of some little vases that were on the table. Shout out to you, Robin. Anyway, so how does this game feel? Does it stand up to today? The answer is yes, it does stand up to today. This is a really fun abstract strategy game. And even though it's 3,400 years old, with the um, the complexity is is simple enough to learn that you can you can learn it in five minutes, but a lifetime to master. It's one of those games. It's even simpler than chess, but in some ways there are some ways that the strategy can 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 be at least as complicated as chess. There's lots of ways to trick people's eyes. People have a tendency, and it's very fun to watch your opponent fall for this, to get tunnel vision, be looking at one side of the board and totally miss the obvious mill you're about to make on a different side of the board because you've distracted them. And that's great fun. Now, I do want to point out that even with the version of the game that I play with the optional diagonal moves, even though it is, it is more difficult to get someone into a stalemate, it is still highly possible and far more possible to get someone into a stalemate with nine men's mores than it is with a game like chess. So stalemates do happen. So you have to be prepared when you have a really bad stalemate. Now, the rules say that if you make the same set of moves three times in a row, you declare it a stalemate. Sometimes you lose track of whether or not you've done that, and every once in a while, you do sometimes have to say, all right, we'll call it a draw and start over. That being said, I still really do like this game. I have played this game quite a bit. In fact, in recent years, this would probably be up there as one of the top three most played games in my collection, even though it's such a simple game. There's a lot of people that I like to play this game with, and I'll play it anytime somebody asks. So, 
on the scale of one to 10 stars, I give Nine Men's Morris eight out of 10 stars because I love this game. It is tons of fun and I will play it any time I have an opponent willing to play Nine Men's Morris. There you have it. But let's get a second opinion from Lynn because not everybody agrees on every game. Lynn, how many stars out of 10 would you give to Nine Men's Morris? So Lynn only gave it four stars. And now that's not a real big surprise to me because Lynn refuses to play this game with me. When I do play this game, it is never with her. I always play it with other people. She's played it a handful of times with me and found that she was just no good at the strategy and is far too susceptible to the tunnel vision and took an instant dislike to it. That happens, but I think a, a, a large portion of her dislike of the game is, is mainly just because she has a lot of trouble with it. It isn't very good with it. But there you have it. She gave it only four stars. I gave it eight stars. So, so this is a one thumb up, one thumb down review, if you will. But I do recommend, and especially since you can try it out in your yard, scratching it into the dirt with some rocks you find, I do recommend you try Nine Men's Morse. And if you do enjoy it, you will want to get yourself a nice board for it to play rather than just scratching it into the dirt. So this board uh, that I got from East Wind Games, which you can find them online, uh, I quite like a bit because it's it's a very nice travel board. It, the way it, it cinches up into a pouch is great. I really like this board and I do highly recommend East Wind Games for your uh, Nine Men's Morris needs. So there you have it. Eight stars for me, four stars from Lynn, Nine Men's Morris. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Have you played Nine Men's Morris before? Are you a fan? Do you hate it? Go ahead and comment down below. Do you have any comments or questions either on Nine Men's Morris or on this video? Feel free to comment down below. And if you liked this video and you would like to see more like it, please, please, please like, share, and subscribe. And also, please comment down below if you would like to see me do more classic game reviews. I was thinking of doing some more classic game reviews on games such as The Ancient Game of Ur, as well as Stratego, and um, also maybe even uh, chess and checkers and some things like that to mix in with my more modern game reviews. Let me know what you think. Would you like to see more classic game reviews? And until next time, game on.